So do you enjoy the content here on Thoughtful Faith? If so, be sure to hit the notification bell. This ensures that our new videos show up on your feed. Also, be sure to check out our Facebook group called Thoughtful Saints, where myself and others discuss the sorts of topics found on this channel. And lastly, if you think other people would benefit from this video, please be sure to share it. Fully Which leads to the question I was going to ask. Do you guys see God as being a part of the universe or outside of so the universe? So this, and, I, and I'm going to get into that, because that this is one of the great discussions that goes on within Latter-day Saint sort of discussions, right? Mm. Is where is God exactly? Now, there are people who will grasp, especially evangelical critics, that they go immediately to the most, like, God is a man with flesh and blood constricted by time and space, basically like you and me, like, and mm -hmm. that God is so limited that it really does present, it, there, there are things that turn me off about that overly constricted version of God, right? Yeah. But the let's go back to the more fundamentals of this question. I'm going to pull up these slides again. It begins with this question about, that you just asked, does God exist within the universe or outside of the universe? But I actually take that question and step even one more back. And I ask, does God exist within reality or does he exist outside of reality? Okay, now that's, that is a, a question that like, I, I have to show it here and I'll, and I'll, and I'll kind of break this down. I think I have it here now. There it is. Okay, so... If we define, because you want to talk about the universe, right? So if we're going to define the universe as just the realm that we observe within time, the time-space continuum that exists, then that would be what I call the, in fact, actually, I'm going to go to the next slide because I think it shows it. So let's just call that little green bubble there our universe. That's time, space, like I look out and I can see into the cosmos does God exist within that? Could I get on a spaceship and fly to Kolob, right? And they, oh, there's God. He's sitting there on his like super throne, right? Mm -hmm. that, that's one model that, that exists for God exists within the universe in that respect. But are we to believe that all that exists is our universe, time, space, as we know it and experience mm -hmm. it, right? Sure. If we believe that there is something bigger than our universe, which is the model that I actually hold to, I would probably put God in what I call model two here, is to say that there exists a reality that's bigger than the one that we exist in. I yeah, actually, which I would agree with. And, and I would say that if you're going to look at something like the biz, Big Bang, you know, we're getting into sort of cosmological arguments here mm -hmm. and ideas. I would argue that the universe is emergent that we exist in. I, I actually am a big fan of William Lane Craig's arguments for, if, mm -hmm. well, to some extent, I'll, I'll mm -hmm. kind of preface that. But I think that there is a reason, there are good reasons to believe through things like the laws of thermodynamics. Like I think his, like things are proceeding towards disorder. So it's very hard to po posit an infinite past within our existing universe as we know sure. it. Right. And so I think it is reasonable, at least, to postulate the idea of the universe as emergent from something else, some sure. hyper reality that's bigger than us. And I do yeah. believe that God exists within that sphere, within right? that hyper reality. Yeah. Within that hyper reality, within mm -hmm. the, the bigger picture, bigger picture. Which I would, I would, I would agree with that. And I, I think that lines up with what we see even in like a Ephesians chapter six, recognizing that, you know, when we're when we're battling our own uh, spiritual reality, it's it's not just a flesh and blood experience, but there's a there's a reality that goes beyond this, where there are authorities and principalities warring in a hyper reality, what we would call the spiritual realm. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's the, the one thing I would say about reality is is reality too subjective of a term because one who has you know certain delusions has a, a reality that's different from the rest of us but i think what you're getting at when you say reality is what is real yes and how we experience what is real what, what and actually, are there layers what, to what actually exists 
Yes. Right. Some of the, I mean, this is deep metaphysics here and, yeah. and it gets, and the thing is, is that a Latter-day Saint is not, and, and you will find even the, we are not constricted to model three in this diagram that God okay. exists literally on a star that we could travel to if we had a spaceship with the ability to get there. Okay. Okay. Like, and I would find that, and, and you will find Latter-day Saints who kind of embrace a model three. I think Quaku probably falls more into the model three uh, mm -hmm. kind. I don't. Um, I believe that our, I, I think there's good evidence to believe the universe is emergent. However, I think this just backs things up a step because then in this greater reality, there's there's another model that you could put. You could say that God exists outside of reality itself in some way, or, or the way that people will talk about God will, will be to say that God exists outside of reality in any meaningful sense. Um, for instance, if you say that God is in no way physical and he, you know, a purely immaterial being, right? In what way can he interact with a material universe? Right? It's 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 sort of the it, it's the mind body problem that exists. Like, how do you get mind from sure. matter? But it's it's just you take that same thing. You have matter, the material universe, and then you have God, which is you know pure mind, no, no materiality at all. Yeah. And then he's supposedly in control of all aspects of the material universe. Yes. And that's a very I would say hard yes. <laughs> that's a hard philosophical, you know, it is. question I, to square. Where where we would I like that you're showing me pictures. That helps me. I wish I had pictures to bring cuz I'll do my best to describe a picture. So you're fine. what we would say to that is we believe that God um, is outside of time and space. But he is also omnipotent. He is all powerful. Um, that in one, some people might reduce that to say he can do whatever he wants because he's that powerful. Uh, that's a little bit dangerous because he is also still bound by his. He is a person. He is personal. He's, he's, person. he's bound by his nature. He's bound by his character, um, which is why the Bible can say something like God cannot lie because that is against his nature, right? So w the the. What we would say again, we we're we're always putting God in this personal, almost unreachable realm in creedal Christianity. He is that vast and that eternal. He is and, outside and just of time and space. To, to bring back the pictures, Latter Day Saints, one of the things that we feel like you guys are doing is that you guys push God into what I call Model One here, uh -huh. where he he's he doesn't seem to be real. <laughs> he seems to exist only as a figment of our imaginations because if you're not if you have no material substance and you in no way interact or, or like you know what else doesn't have any materiality or my thoughts and well but here, th there's a, there's a really really key thing that you need to acknowledge when when you have that thought about us pushing god to the fact that he's not real and the word became flesh and dwelt among us uh-huh the answer to your question is God knowing he is so otherly, knowing that he is so far outside of the created universe and yet still desiring for there to be relationship because he is a loving God. He is a personal God. That is, that is why that we see that in the garden with Adam and Eve. That is why the incarnation is so miraculously important. Uh -huh. If you need to see to believe, okay, I'll make myself seen. And through the incarnation of the son, he does that, which is why... Like even now, my heart rate is is increasing as I just think about how this otherly, vast, infinite, eternal, omnipotent, omniscient, whatever omni you want to say about God <laughs> is so beautifully loving and personal that he did become a baby and didn't just, ju and, didn't and, just and entered and entered into this green dot. Entered into the green dot. And it wasn't just though this would have been justified to put on some vanity display of how great he is, but to deal with the very thing through his own self-sacrifice that was keeping us separated from him, showing the, the great length that he's wanting to go to in an incarnational sense to bring us into relationship with him. And this is something that's also really important about our view. I was talking about this with Greg Matson, um, And that is... 
we believe passionately in a physical resurrection um, and a physical eternity, that we are going to exist in a substance similar to the resurrected Jesus in an eternal physical place. It's not, we don't die and go to heaven forever. That, that is a misunderstood idea of the afterlife. And a lot of evangelicals and even Catholics think that. We don't die and go to heaven. We die. We go to an intermediate state as we await resurrection. And, and this is, is where... Which is, which is weirdly similar to us. <laughs> it's it's exactly... Well, I mean, it's in the Bible. So um, so we, we believe then that we will be resurrected and that we'll be, we will live in the book of Revelation, how it kind of describes this presence of God um, where Jesus is on the throne and there is... Uh, almost a restored Garden of Eden to a certain extent. Uh -huh. So when you say, yes, we're almost pushing God to a place where he's unknown, almost like just this ethereal idea, that's where the incarnation becomes critical and central. A Amen. Yeah. In the sense yeah. that we we are also like the physicality, obviously one of the big like sort of controversies is our focus on the nature of the body and things like that. We obviously believe in a bodily resurrection from the dead. We believe that Jesus was bodily resurrected and that he had a body of flesh and bones. It's perfectly clear based yep, on agreed. you know when he was eating fish and he ate some fish. Yeah. Him. Like, hey guys, like, <laughs> look, I have a body. So our our belief is is that. Jesus Christ shows us through the Bible and his own resurrection into physicality that you have a divine being who you would say is fully God that also is fully embodied in a, in a glorified and resurrected body. And one thing I want to make sure that people understand is that when you make Jesus, Christ, remember Jesus Christ's body prior to his resurrection was like our body. Post-resurrection, his body was a glorified and resurrected body. So when Agreed. people in the Christian tradition attack us saying, hey, you guys believe that God has this body, you have to remember, we're saying he has the body like Jesus had when he resurrected, which is not an exalted confined. Body. Like people are like, oh, you think God has to eat and go to the bathroom and all that? Well, I would say, did Jesus after the resurrection, have to eat and go to the bathroom and all the rest of it. So our belief in the in the bodily manifestation of Jesus after the resurrection and then his ascension into heaven, we essentially are saying that Jesus Christ went from the green world with a body into that hyper-reality and that 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 resurrected state of a body has the ability to, at least my my sort of conception of it, has that ability to interface with the greater reality, which it's kind of like you're able to exist in both and you're able to interact mm -hmm. with both when you have attained uh, a resurrected, perfected state. 